Now consider two special cases of application of spectrophotometry. The first case is to determination of equilibrium constant, and the other case is to uh, determining the uh, the ratio between two reactants. Okay, let's consider the first case, and we assume the the chemical reaction of P plus X becomes PX. Okay, so our purpose is to measure the equilibrium constant K. By definition, K is given by this equation PX divided by P and X. Okay, and the experiment is usually done by adding small portion of X, you know, little by little, to the solution of P, which remains constant, okay, constant amount of P. P0 is total P, and after reacting with X, total P concentration becomes smaller by Px amount, okay. So this uh, equation holds concentration of P equals P0 minus concentration of Px, okay. And we substitute this one into the equilibrium constant equation. And then we get uh, this one. Okay? Px over x equals k multiplied by p equals k parenthesis p0 minus px parenthesis. Okay? And we uh, taking this px over x y as y and px as x and plotting this y versus x, you get straight line. And this is the uh, uh, linear equation. And equilibrium, uh, the, the slope is minus k, and y uh, intercept is k multiplied by p0. And this is an example. Mm -hmm. As we expected, the slope is negative. Of course, yeah, we we removing the negative sign. Uh, this value is uh, equilibrium constant. Okay, this is called squared plot and widely used in biochemistry um, to seek equilibrium constant. Okay, if we know the concentration of Px, we can find x with mm, a mass balance equation. Okay, x zero is total concentration of x which is the sum of px and x okay now how do we uh, do the determination of uh, equilibrium constant spectrophotometrically yeah that's quite simple to measure here px yeah? we apply spectrophotometry okay and also we further we have to further assume that in this species, yeah, there are three species, P, X, and PX. And only P and PX species have some absorbance at certain wavelengths. But species X has no absorbance. Yeah? And that's our another assumption, which is usually true. In that case, at some wavelengths, the absorbance is the uh, sum of absorbance due to px and p okay here uh, we simply remove the path length a b right and px is given by this mass balance equation and instead of px oh i'm sorry p instead of p uh, we use this one and then we get a new equation and then rearranging this one uh, we get equation for a a equals px multiplied by the uh, molar subtivity difference plus a0 and this a1 if you uh, want to move this a term to the right side and then we get delta a okay and then this px is simply is given by this the difference in um, absorbance divided by difference in molar absorptivity okay and then 
this one px over x we already got this equation yeah? by this uh, given by this equation and then instead of px here we uh, use this one okay so finally we reached delta a divided by x equals k multiplied by delta epsilon multiplied by p0 minus k multiplied by delta a okay this is called skew chart equation for the determination of a k here so taking uh, this part as y and delta a x we plot yeah, and then the slope must be minus uh, k okay and this one is mm, y intercept all right but we meet two uh, cases yeah? first one is when the k value is small yeah? so dissociation constant is uh, is equivalent constant is small yeah? in this case to get significant amount of ps you need to add large x okay and then x0 total concentration of x is much larger than p0 okay and then in the case it can be approximated the concentration of a kilogram concentration of x almost equals total concentration of x0 okay but when k is not small in the case the equilibrium constant of k must be measured okay the best approach is an independent measurement of this x by measuring different physical properties all right so for most accurate data the, this s must be between 0 0.2 and 0 0.8 here uh, s is fraction of saturation is given by px over p0 okay so uh, in actuality equilibrium constant there are many cases where the equilibrium constant is very small so this approach is possible all right and another example is to the uh, uh, determining uh, the predominant complex that method is called uh, continuous variation okay another name is drops method okay let's assume p and x react together okay to give px or you don't know whether p reacts with two moles of x okay and px2 or maybe three x's to give px3 so you don't know which species are predominant px or px2 or px3 how do you know by spectral photometry okay the method is very uh, ingenious okay very clever here the idea is that which is classical method mixing aliquots of eq molar solution of a p and x by dilution to a constant volume such that the total concentration of p plus x remains constant yeah this is very important yeah we change the concentration of p and x okay but all the time the total concentration of p plus x remains constant okay this uh, table shows that example all right here this first column is the uh, uh, let's say total uh, uh, the volume is the same and then the first col column is the uh, volume of p and second column is volume of x okay you see the volume of p and x is all the time 10 yeah? all right 10 yeah all the time 10 10 mm -hmm. okay. so we can calculate the mole ratio x to p okay in this case the first case you know the original concentration is the same 2.5 millimolar okay but since x 
volume is 9 and uh, p volume is uh, 1 so mole ratio x to 10 is 9 to 1 okay 9 to 1 in this case the mole fraction of x is what total volume is 10 9 out of 10 is 0.9 okay and second case is that you increased the volume of p to 2 milliliters okay and then you decrease the x volume to 8 okay but total volume is all the time 10 in this case mole ratio of x and p equals 8 to 2 which is 4 to 1 and mole fraction of x is in this case 0 0.8 yeah like that yeah in this way you can all the way down to uh, you change p to 9 milliliters and x to 1 milliliters okay yeah and then you measure uh, absorbance at a certain wavelength and then uh, after correcting the absorbance you will get this kind of curve yeah? a closer look at uh, this one uh, and x axis is mole fraction of x yeah? this one this column will be the x axis okay and y axis is the corrected absorbance and very interestingly if P and X reacts one to one, man, at the mole ratio of mole fraction of 0 0.5, yeah, which is the uh, half and half. Okay, at this uh, mole fraction, you get the maximum corrected absorbance. Okay, but if the uh, uh, P X two this form forms, then means one. 1 p species react with 2 x species okay in the case what at a mole ratio a mole fraction of 6.666 then you can get maximum corrected absorbance all right but what about in the case of p3 x in this case x must be 0 0.25 okay here and then you get the maximum corrected absorbance all right yeah What is the corrected absorbance? That corrected absorbance is the measured absorbance minus the absorbance by the P and X. Yeah. Since we assumed in this case the only PX absorbs light, but actually there is a small absorbance due to species P and species X. Okay, PT is a total concentration of P and TX, XT is a total concentration X in solution. Right? But if this uh, pure P and pure X don't absorb any light, this kind of uh, correctness, correction process doesn't, is not needed. Okay? So, from this one, this figure, Maximum absorbance occurs at stoichiometry of complex. Okay, for the case of PX2, mole fraction of X in PAXB, yeah, in this case, the maximum absorbance occurs at this mole fraction, B over B plus A. All right, for P is one and X is two, which is 0 0.667. Okay, yeah, but some precautions must be exercised first you have to verify that complex follows bs law okay otherwise you know this method doesn't work and second use constant ion strengths and ph if possible okay yeah to make the uh, ion strength constant is important and also uh, make the ph constant okay and third, take readings at more than one wavelength. Okay? Uh, in principle, only one wavelength measurement is okay, but uh, uh, for the uh, sake of uh, you know, uh, security, okay? so you do the same uh, measurement at different wavelengths. Okay? Yeah. And final caution is two experiments at different total concentration of uh, P plus X. All right still of course as some same mole fraction okay? which means that 
total concentration of p plus x is different, but result must be the same. Okay. Yeah, here is the uh, uh, one example. EDTA titration with copper iron. Okay, this is cupric iron. As we know, EDTA makes a complex, yeah, very nice one-to-one -one complex with most metal ions. So the corrected maximum absorption must occur at mole fraction of 0 0.5. Right? We know the answer already, but let's prove experimentally. Okay, this left figure is the copper EDTA complex. The absorbance with respect to volume of copper uh, ion. Okay, this is what the raw data. And then this data should be converted into uh, drops plot. Okay, this one. And this absorbance must be corrected by subtracting EDTA and cupric ion uh, absorbance. Okay, at a certain wavelength. And this volume must Convert, must be converted to more fraction of copper ion and then it is a very nice uh, um, result were obtained why two or two curves because the same experiment were done at two different wavelengths okay and then as you see uh, at more fraction of uh, 0 0.5 you see the maximum absorbance so answer is that the there is one to one complex between EDTA and cupric ion okay